My name is Callum Lofers, I am 16 years old, and this is my evaluation vlog. <laughs> when I first started my media course, I learnt lots of different ranges of skills. I learnt how to cut videos, sound, and how to plan what I was going to do as a group, and how I was going to improve my work as a whole. I used all these skills in most of my projects, except by project 1, where I didn't have that much experience or what I was doing at all. How I showed I used these skills and did it work. I showed these skills that I've learned by practicing a lot at home and in college and when it came to doing these projects I knew what I was going to do for the group. When I was working for my group I was an editor and, and from that I was learning how to cut videos at the right time, where to put in music as background or just how to put things together and fade them away. At some point I became the presenter. At the start it didn't work that much as I didn't have much experience from what I was doing at all. When I started at college I was learning what kind of platforms I would need to use when making these videos. I was also learning that certain videos and like certain vlogs got put up on certain social medias like if it was a quick little video like 10 seconds long with shortcuts it would probably go on snapchat or instagram if it was like this really long like 20 minute vlog you're better off putting it on youtube when i was making my projects i learned lots of different techniques some of them were that if i made a vlog it doesn't always have to be formal i could make it as funny as I want, as exciting as I want, and I could even end it off as a cliffhanger sometimes. When I was doing my projects, at first my audience found it a little bit boring as I didn't have that much to speak about. I was just speaking what was coming through my head really, and that was about it. Also, I didn't like being in front of a camera, but slowly things were getting better. I was starting to practice at home, just so I can improve what I was going to do for my next project. Yeah. Who and what are your audiences? My audiences are my classmates and my teachers and just for young, any sort of age really. The best way for me to show what I've done and my work is by YouTube. YouTube has all ranges of people watching it, old, young, and I feel like it can get through to a lot of people. I show my work through YouTube, as I was saying, as a lot of people can find it, and it's easier for all of us to use. Yeah. Our audience were okay with it, from then it started to get much more better for me uh, as I would say much, lots of uh, people in my class liked what I was doing more now as I started <sighs> method that I used really was I didn't really use a method as I would say as I don't really know that many but methods that I kind of used was just explaining what things were if people didn't know what they were uh, just making things entertaining for other people to use but next time I would like to change some things like sometimes I would like it to be funny and then other other times I would like it to be formal and serious depending on what the subject was. How I can get to my audience better next time is, is I don't know how to explain it but there is a lot of ways that I can get to my audiences better and one of them one of the reasons are I just I need to make make like a, an age place so like certain things for certain age ratings, things for like younger teenagers would like and some videos for like older people to like and 
I feel like if I can mix them two together, there will be a lot more people watching it and my audience will find things so much what better. What areas are your strengths and weaknesses? My strength so far that I've done is editing. I know I haven't. I, I know that I don't know that much about it, but I feel like my strongest point is my editing. I also I also need to work on my evaluation and evidence. Yeah, I need to work on saving my evidence onto Wix and describing and saying what I've learned and how I did it and how I planned it. Yeah. What skills do you need to master and improve on? Skills, things that I need to improve on and master is editing because I want to become an editor or a filmmaker and that involves a lot of editing. So I need to improve a lot on that, work much more harder just so I can get to the next level. Yeah. How have you approached your professional attitude? Uh, I, Professional attitude is, at the start, I was messing around. I, I did take things seriously, but there was like a funny side of me on the side, like laughing at things for no reason. But from then I was, <laughs> from then I was kind of improving. I became much more work, working, basically. I was working so much more consistently, yeah. And that kind of thing's made much more better for me. Yeah, just pause it, I need to read this. How has your professional work ethic been? Uh, my professional work ethic has been okay, been lots of ups and downs. Uh, I needed lots of evidence about how I did my work and why I did my work. But from the start, it's the same as before. I was kind of not wasting time as I would say but I wouldn't put in as much time and effort as I used to now as I've been working so much harder just to try and reach that higher grade and get to the next level yeah one of the subjects that I was doing or one of the projects that I was doing we had to do a lot of research one of the the one that I'll be speaking about today is David Attenborough. One of the projects that we were learning about was David Attenborough and we had to do quite a lot of research because we didn't know much about him and what he did. We had to do a news report. The news report subject was the news report subject was is he trying to shine away from humans destroying the earth and from that we had to do a lot of planning so we went on to quite a lot of news news websites and get a lot of articles up about why he was doing it and what it was about we also looked up at we also looked up about two famous people one of them was called Boyan Slat. Research that we learnt from him was he made the first he made the first clean up system for the ocean. And he done this all undercover with no social media involved. And that gave us quite a lot of information really about how people are doing things and that we're not knowing about it. Yeah. So all the research that we did was all on news reports. It was more, mainly secondary resource, secondary research. But when we came to doing the questions, we did the primary primary research or sources. So we made up our own questions and all that. We also looked up politics. We searched up all the parties, we got lots of information about it and we also put uh, who we thought was going to win the election and from like the, the most amount of votes to the least amount of votes 
we also went around Dartford for the project. We also we went into the library because we thought the library would have a lot of knowledge about the environment as it's a library, that's where they keep all the knowledge and research. So we asked one of the staff members and she knew a bit about David Attenborough, so we interviewed her. We also did complete enough research. The amount of research that we did, I think that we could have put more effort into what we were doing. Uh, so no, I don't think we put enough research in it. So I'm going to go back and put some more information on everything and all the planning that we've done. Yeah. From the project, I learned quite a lot of things, skills, a lot. I learned planning is the most important key to media, research is the most important key as well. Like... If you've got no research, how are you meant to talk about it? How are you meant to know what you're talking about? What are you meant to know? Like, what is every, how is how is everyone going to know what your what your project is about if there is no research behind it? Was it the right research? The research that we're doing, I think it was a good amount of research. As we got a lot of information that we didn't know about the environment, David Attenborough and his question on Seven Worlds, One Planet, is he shining away from blaming humans? And from that we learnt that a lot of people thought it was going to happen without humans, we just, humans are just making things faster for us, yeah. Thank you for watching my evaluation project. Bye.